We are live in Kansas, as Roy was just saying. We'll give everybody a minute to come in on this World Whiskey Day. Big shout out to Roy. All, everybody knows him, Aqua Vitae. I think everybody is probably just tuning in for organizing this starting on Tuesday. I think it was. It was very short notice. Roy said, hey, what do you guys think about doing World Whiskey Day? And we all do separate blocks on our own channels. We said, yes, let's do it. And within three days, he's put this together. So big shout out to Roy. Uh, with me tonight uh, from Instagram, and actually, uh, Charles is here. He's muted himself right now. Go back to, I think it was July 8th of last year, the Scotch Test Dummies did 12 hours of boom. I had been seeing Charles, known as Drinking Caveman on Instagram. Uh, all over the place, posting this, posting that. And uh, we invited him on for the 12 hours of boom. He had his own 45 minute block. We talked uh, whiskeys, him blending, aging his own whiskeys and doing his own blends in many casks. Since he has joined up with Wally, also known as Sniff from Scotch and Sniff. They make their own uh, YouTube blogs, vlogs now. Uh, on the chat on a channel known as Whiskey Untitled. Uh, Charles, go ahead, come in. I'm here. Hey, everybody, how are you guys doing? Um, yeah, so thank you so much for the warm welcome. Um, yeah, so um, one half of uh, the Whiskey Untitled sniff sadly was not able to make it, but um, yeah, I'm here to represent. So hope for uh, have a great time for World Whiskey Day. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, and someone already commented, Bart will not be here. Bart actually had a board game event today. As many of you know, Bart does whiskey and he does board games. Uh, there was actually him and his wife had organized a uh, board game event here in town. In years past, it had gone all day into the late hours of the evening. They've since shortened it up because it was going too long, but he was still ending at like 6 or 7 p.m. And a big shout out. Uh, to the malted in Montreal Swami uh, with the first super chat. And I don't know if you meant to send that much. If you did, Swami, thank you. If not, let us know. We'll get some of that. That was $69, 69 Very sexy number, my friend. I know. I don't know if you meant <laughs> that on purpose or not. And fact is, we'll be handing off to Swami here in one hour. Uh, Swami's going to have uh, Eric Waite on. Eric Waite went live this morning early on making uh, bourbon breakfast. He did a nice uh, cornbread with Buffalo Trace uh, bourbon. And I don't know if Eric's even, is Eric here? Has he been tuning in? Because he drank like three quarters of a bottle of Buffalo Trace early this morning. He could be sleeping it off. Yeah, everyone's looking for the cowbell, man. <laughs> That's a big one. Big, big cowbell there. Thanks, Swami. Holy crap. Uh, I thought you just had that iPhone app, but you actually have a bell down there. <laughs> well, we did have, we had the iPhone, uh, the sound on an iPhone, and we said we've got to get an actual cowbell. So we did. Now, uh, during this hour, well, I don't need this in anymore. Sorry. I, I, me and uh, Charles had hooked up early, and I was actually listening to Roy in one ear when he was live with Whiskey Jason uh, just prior to this. Let's do a big shout out though, Charles. A lot of the people that are involved today, uh, people, uh, whiskey tubers, we've brought in. This is World Whiskey Day. Of course, we've got Roy at Octa Vitae and Jason Whiskey Wise. Whiskey Jason from Germany and Hoagie Bear. Uh, Mark's Whiskey Whistle, he had some technical difficulties. I think most people uh, that are watching uh, knew he had some problems. Then over at No Nonsense Whiskey was able to go live with Whiskey Bloke. Uh, good, good segment there. Mark came in at the end. Uh, who else you got on your list there, Charles? Just playing up mine right now. So, uh, who else we got here? I didn't want to do all the talking. I was going to let you do. Something. That's all good, man. I was trying to pull up the list before you pointed to me, but then you pointed to me. So. <laughs> Catch me with the pants down. Um, all right, so who else we got? We got Montreal after us with Eric Waite, Whiskey Dick, and then we got Whiskey in a Six, Malted Man Cave again, and then uh, Whiskey Tharl and Food Quick to tie it all off. So a great day ahead. You betcha. Now, I wonder, did Whiskey Dick, did he get his guest hashed? I know he was going to try to get its bourbon night 
on Chad and Sarah, and I don't think that was panning out. A uh, nice super chat from Octa Vite just came in. Another little, oh, and holy crap, Tom. And a big super chat from Tom. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Roy points out passing on the baton to us. Good luck, boys. And Tom R says, Compass box for the win. You've corrupted me, Scott. And yes, I blame you. Cheers. The circus is really good. We assume no responsibility or liability, Tom, in people's habits. Man, but like you guys are definitely a a big fan of the the compass box. So um, I'm surprised, uh, Tamar. Thank you so much for that. Um, definitely, you could probably buy another bottle. I'm guessing. Yeah, we'll have to for sure. Let's go. So World Whiskey Day came up, and it was. I mean, so World Whiskeys. Gen now, generally to us here in America, when you say a World Whiskey. We think you would be talking about scotch, an Indian whiskey, a Japanese whiskey, something like that. And that topic had even come up. What whiskeys will people be discussing? Uh, I got with Charles. I said, what do you think? And we said, let's go with rye whiskeys. Uh, we don't think anybody else would be talking about rye whiskeys. And to people in Scotland, India, Japan, uh, Australia, uh, New Zealand, anywhere, rye is a world whiskey. Yeah, so um, no, I thought it was a great idea. Like, if everyone's followed um, Whiskey Untitled, they all know that uh, Michter's Barrel Proof that I think you have in the back there is one of my favorite ryes. So I'm um, definitely starting off with that. So uh, here, quick, uh, if you guys can see, this is what we'll be drinking, or I'll be drinking today. So I got three ryes here. I got my favorite, which is the Michter's Barrel Strength. I got a, uh, what's it, a High West Midwinter's Night Stram, and then I have Blackback. Um, honey rye, which is a flavored rye. So kind of get a gamut of all the different types of ryes that I have in my collection. And uh, Scott, what do you have uh, today for yourself? Well, very nice. And why don't you push, because that's a set that you sell there, isn't it, for tasting? Uh, yeah, it's a set that sadly don't sell yet, but it's just a thing that I made. So it's more for blind tastings. Um, as you know, that um, it's probably the best way to um, try and taste new whiskeys. So I uh, got a guy over here to make one of these for me. So I thought it was a cool thing. And then plus, you know, since we're trying whiskey today. I was like, why not bring it out? Yeah, looks very nice. I like it. Yeah. So yeah, well, Scott, what, what do you got there? I'm pouring the Michter's Barrel Strength. Awesome. I was a big fan of this one. Um, the rye was decent, but um, it's something about, I don't know if if you, you guys are all like big whiskey fans. So um, as you know, eventually you get to a point where it's not strong enough. So Barrel Strength seems to be the type of um, whiskeys that most of us go for. The Bottle of Wow, for instance, is another big bourbon ones that people drink. So um. This just big overhitting power of rye. So I don't know. It's just my, a big favorite of mine. Well, and if you go back to, we did a rye shootout, which was the first 16 bottle blind uh, shootout that we did. Uh, Bart, through that one, we went through it. This was at the beginning of last year. Bart chose from the 16 bottles, the Pikesville rye. My favorite of the 16 was the Michter's barrel strength that I, that, that advanced up and moved its way through. So yeah, yeah. Quick. little cowbell for no nonsense whiskey. Thanks for the super chat. Uh, he's Thanks got to head much. to bed. It is getting late, uh, to our, all, our, all of our people over in, in, uh, Europe. They are six hours ahead of us. So it's one o'clock in the morning there. Yeah. Cheers to all the Europeans that are staying up with us. Thank you guys so much. Our day is just about to get started. So thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, that's true. They started, uh, well, Roy's first live stream was at 4 p.m. here. So, you know, 10 p.m. there for him. But yeah, just something about this, even though it's it's barrel proof, it's not like overpowering. It doesn't smack you in the face too much. It's just full of flavor, I think, for me anyway. Mm. Now, this is, I'll tell you, uh, the liquor store that we frequent got in one bottle year and a half ago which is this bottle that i bought and it is a, a 16 at uh a 2016 bottling at 114 proof just recently i only got my second bottle of it that's how hard this is to even come by around here and it was from my nephew who travels around and he was in nebraska and he'd send me a text and he said, Hey, I'm in a store. They've got a Michter's barrel strength here. Do you want it? And I was like, yeah, I get it. Cause <laughs> I've never seen it since. Yeah. To be honest, I haven't actually seen it anywhere near me. So I have barrel number, was it L one five 
H678. Um, 110.4 proof, 55.2. Yeah. And I actually got this from the UK. That's how hard it was for me to even try and get it here. So I have to get it imported before wow. the whole ban and stuff like that from um, Masters of Mold. All right. A little more cowbell for Doug. Uh, Chris Ope there. Thanks for the super chat. Awesome. Man, look at the money going in, guys. Yeah. Very much appreciated. But I'll tell you, with with... And, I, and I've done this with a few people is to show them a young rye. And to me, that's the James E. Pepper 1776 rye, which they literally tell you is like two and a half years old. And you get a lot of spice. You get a lot of pepper, just a, a kick on the palate full of rye. And then you go to me, the Michters and the Pikesville, both that more aged rye worth you get more of the oak and, and more of the kind of the bourbon notes that come in with the rye as well is where yeah, the age. i definitely agree with you on that one like it, it does definitely if i didn't know if this was a rye it would definitely be like a bourbon with a higher rye content mm -hmm. but it just it just blends so well it's so well balanced and it casts strength it's just it's so smooth yeah and now one thing a, a comment just came in from tom r and i, I was going to address this before the hour was up He's asking, when is the show for the food bank? We are doing a charity show. It's next Sunday, uh, 2 p.m. Uh, the Edmonton Scotch Club had reached out to us and said, hey, would you, we would love for you guys to help us out with this food drive. It's a charity thing. We've done it in our hometown. We feel we've kind of grown or maxed out as much as we can here in Edmonton. And would you guys be interested in, and they reached out to a few other uh, whiskey folk from Twitter and Instagram. You know, could you would you guys hold, you know, kind of local tastings and then donate the proceeds to you know your local food banks? So we said, sure, we'd love to do that. So next Sunday, two p.m., uh, Bart and I will be live. We're going to do a spring bank tasting. We should have this. Just this, we'll start with the spring bank ten. We will go to um, probably spring bank. I've got a twenty year old single cask ex bourbon. We've got the Long Row Red Malbec finish, 13-year, and we've got a 13-year uh, Hazelburn Oloroso Sherry uh, cast. It's all from Springbank. So our tasting will do that. All the super chats and come in that come in during that show uh, will be donated to local food banks. You don't even have to super chat it in. What you can do is just make a donation to your local food bank and then tweet or Instagram or email us the picture, uh, hashtag it with uh, drams for fams. And we'll track it that way as far as how much money that comes in. All the super chats that we get, we will also uh, immediately donate to our local food bank. And it's not even that you're donating to the food bank in Canada, it's all local. So if you're in San Francisco, and we know San Francisco has a, needs, has a big local food bank there. Is that right, Charles? Yeah, you're close. Uh, I know you're not in San Francisco. Yeah, like, yeah they do. They're yeah. Like, they're very, very supportive over there. But yes, they do have one. <laughs> I've seen, I've seen it story. once. So. I've seen a lot of stories lately on uh, the homeless in the San Francisco area. But, you know, if you're in um, Wichita, like we are, we can you can donate to your local food bank. So the money stays local. They just want to see how much of an influence and how much money they can bring in overall. So it'll be a good showing of whiskey um, tubers as well, or whiskey influencers to help out. So I think that's a great, great cause. Right. And we also, they gave us the logo. We've uploaded it to our t-shirt shop, uh, the Drams for Fams logo. If you go there and you order a t-shirt, again, we'll donate all of the proceeds over to our local food bank. So awesome. Should be, should be a good show. Yeah. Thanks, Tamar. I do like my headphones a lot. Just in the chat. <laughs> Yeah, and one thing uh, I haven't noticed, uh, I see Swami is tuning in. I don't know if Rob Whiskey in the Six is, is, is World Whiskey Day. I see Blind Whiskey Reviews is tuning in. Uh, Whiskey Untitled, well, that's you. Yep. Yay, I'm tuning in. Um, Telex, Telex has his own channel. I'm looking through here, see who we got that's tuning in. Uh, do, 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 do. I know Roy was here. Uh, Jason Whiskey Wise was here. The no Nonsense Whiskey was here. No Nonsense Whiskey. Yeah, he's just going to bed. If we haven't called you out, comment here and uh, we'll give you a Whiskey Throttle. There's Daniel. He's tuning in. 
he just got out of the shower. We did not need to know that. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, we, we saw your white towel. Don't worry. <laughs> but yeah, so um, I'm actually almost done with mine, which is for me, now, that's pretty quick. On the, on the subject of, of older rye and a bourbon influence, did you have or have you tried the Booker's rye? Um, no, I have not. I do have a sample here. I think Wally put it in a mystery bottle. Oh, because he wanted my real opinion if it was actually good or not. So okay. I know he was not a fan. And um, I've seen him sadly put it in a old fashioned. So, um, well, you should just tell him you take that bottle off of his hands then. I know, right? So um, I know he's, he put it in a mystery bottle. So I got to do that soon. But um, I've had the Michter's 10 rye. For both years, 16 and 17, I preferred the 16 more because it was more bourbon than a rye, which is kind of weird. But um, eventually you get um, a palate to the wards of rye and what kind of spice level you like, I guess you could say. I know some people like a lot of spicy stuff. So higher rye content, of course, makes it more spicy and then lower rye content makes it less. So. Got some cowbell for Santa Cruz in there. Thanks, Chris. Chris, appreciate it. And uh, he had ordered a, uh, we got an, our own dropper sets from Angel Share. He ordered one of a couple glasses the other day. And he commented that he'd gotten them safe and sound. Now, I'll tell you, the, the Booker's Rye, Charles, I have it. I love it. And I wish I could find another bottle of it. But it is, and it's, I think it's 13 years old in like six months, if I remember right. The bourbon influence on it, I mean, the, the rye notes are so faint. It almost seems like a, a high proof, well aged bourbon. Like you said, the, the bourbon influence over time really start to come in. The rye mellows down. I, I, I loved it. Yeah, I kind of see it like how it's peat, right? The older um, a peated whiskey is, the less um, strong it becomes, the smoke becomes. It's kind of like the same thing with rye, but rye takes a little bit longer. Because, like, yeah, some 10 years you do get spicy notes. Of course, there's always exceptions. Um, the only thing that I feel bad about with the Booker's Rye, it's a one-time thing. So they're going to try to recreate it, but it's never going to happen again. And then the price. So uh, I know people love it a lot, but is it really worth the secondary price? That's the Yeah, the no, I mean, like we were talking a little bit before the show, before we went live, just on some of the stuff. We were talking E.H. Taylor for Green. You know, if I saw that on the shelf, I've got a bo last year's bottle. If I saw it on the shelf for 100 or cheaper, I would buy another bottle. 200 300 400 the secondary prices same thing that's happening with a lot of whiskeys uh, the allocated whiskeys nowadays they're just they're not worth it guys i mean unless you, I, 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 if you've got that much money and you want the bottle okay but van winkle 12 i can't tell the difference between it and weller's 12 and people that are paying 500 dollars for van winkle 12 they're just they're out of their mind if you ask me yeah, I think that when it comes to the Van Winkle lineup, it's definitely name now. Because I remember back in the day, and it sounds really like I'm really old or anything like that, but like probably 10, 15 years ago, that stuff was sitting on shelves. Or at least it wasn't the premium price where it is now. And that's the hard part. I just try to justify it. Like I've had the EH Taylor four grain in samples before. It's not bad, but when you look at the $300, $400 secondary price that people see, it's it gets a bit like, uh, it's more of an investment now than a drinking solution. So. Yeah, or you just you have that much money that's dropping five hundred on a bottle doesn't doesn't affect your finances at all. True, and then those people are the ones not looking at reviews and just buy whatever that says it's whatever's fancy, right? Right. It's McCallum, yay. <laughs> hey, now I like McCallum. I know, but like some, <laughs> some of, like the M and stuff like that. I'm just like, really? It's oh yeah, thousands of dollars. I'm like, unless you're super rich and the, you know that thousand is only a hundred dollars to you or something like that to us or whatever. It just crazy to be honest all right um we were talking mictor's barrel strength yes we and we have, we have a few drams here that we both have together you have some others yep. i uh, what was it? you had the mictor's i know the first one that you have on your on your uh yeah so the mictor's i have the high west midwinter's Mid night's dram let's go there i got that one uh okay uh, which is your batch? So we can, cause I know it's different every year and different acts and stuff. Okay. Now I have act five, scene seven. Okay. So I have last year's act four, scene one. Now. So the way I understand it, 
Act five or act four would denote which year it's from. And then the scene would, would be what batch it is from that year. Batch from that year. Yeah, that was correct. So I think it's five right now. So that's technically 2017, which is weird. Yeah. And then um, last year's, so last, last year. So 2016 is, is act four and so right. on. Right. But yes, you're right. There's scenes are batches from that same year. Now, how many have you had side by side or, or, or can you tell differences from the batches or the scene numbers? I've had three different acts. Um, so I could not tell a difference between the, the act five and act four, but act three was different. And it was just, um, I, I guess more sweeter. I guess you could call it, but um, they say that they're not supposed to change that much, to be honest. So um, it's not like where you get independent barrels where it's a big change in um, the batches. They kind of try uh, as it's sourced, right? It's trying to keep it as consistent as possible, just because that's what people look for. Eventually, what you happen you have happen is if you have single barrels, like you know store picks and stuff like that, a lot of people hunt those. So um, it's very hard for distilleries to re uh, replicate those. So a lot of people try to hoard them. So I guess High West kind of want to have an average of, hey, this is what Midwinter's Night should taste like. And then hopefully there's only minor nuances to it. Now, I've heard that some of or that the later batches or the later or later acts, uh, Act 4 and Act 5, have been better than some of the earlier ba uh, acts, the, the early releases. I would, um, so I haven't had the one or two yet. I've heard one taste really, really bad, but, um, act four and five for me were good. Like it, I would get them over a year now from that. So, well, now, and so when I bought for those that don't know, high West and midwinter nights dram is the, is it the rendezvous rye? Um, I think so. I have I think think this that. is the rendezvous ride and then it's finished in French oak port barrels. Yeah. And when I bought it, I had heard about it, but I was like, I don't know what influence the port is going to have on the rye and whatever they've done. It's magical. If you ask me, I love it. So I'm a big fan of port. So, um, that it, I wouldn't say it, it, it dominated it, but it definitely gives that sweeter note. And then, for me, in the palate, it gives a spicy um, back, I guess, back of the tongue note that I really enjoy. It's not super spicy. It's just a little hint of it, which I think it makes it great. So then you have the port finish, which I like in a lot of my scotches. Like um, Belvini 21, it's not close to that, but it has that port richness. And then you have the extra spice that I love with rice. So I think it's great. Personally, I know um, Wally dislikes this one a lot. So... <laughs> Yeah, Wally. Did, yeah, who cares what Wally thinks? Yeah. So, just a little shout out to Wally Scotch and Sniff. Check him out. Yep. And you guys, really, you guys, since since well, when we had you on last year for the twelve hours of boom, I liked yep. what you were doing. And uh, Sniff was doing their channel with Scott with his brother Scotch, yep. Scotch and Sniff. Scotch retired basically, leaving Sniff on his own. You've paired up, and he's still doing. Uh, his one minute reviews under the on the Scotch and Sniff channel. Yeah, so he does one minute reviews. Um, right now, he has a I think it's a three part series with Tracy, which you guys had online. Um, I think it was like four or five weeks back, maybe. Yeah, and Glenn Fiddick. That... Glenn Fiddick, yep. Tracy. Yep. So she she's now doing a, a three part series with Wally. They're doing a food pairing. Um, a tasting and then like an old bottling as well. So um, she was kind enough to give Wally um, a straight from the casting. It was like a 30 something year old. So, wow. Very I know it's, it's, it's some of the stuff that like, it's like dream whiskeys or I think called limousine whiskeys or whatever, but um, just like drams that I know that either you're going to pay thousands of dollars for, or you might get the chance for one day. So it was nice to kind of see through their eyes. Cause they get to, it's hard for them to even try it too. So just seeing their expressions was pretty cool. Yeah. But he has, um, it, for those that haven't tuned in, Wally hates Pete, and he has some some very descriptive uh, notes for Pete. Uh, he's, he loves McAllen. I do too, 
my wallet doesn't let me try too many McAllen's, but yeah, I agree. <laughs> I still like them. Yep. But so back to this though, the midwinter nice dram, the, the, like you said, the port, it, it just adds such a nice richness. You still get those, those sweet rye notes, some of the orange zest, uh, the di little bit of the dill pickle. It was such, it's such a nice marriage. You could say. And I, I personally believe that High West is definitely in the forefront of rye experimentation. Um, sadly, a lot of people are experimenting with bourbons, um, a lot more with different flavorings. So that the same thing, wine casks, you know, port casks, and so on. But um, I haven't seen a company yet just really focus on rye, and that's what High West is known for, their rye. So um, experimenting with this and hopefully to figure out what they're going to do next. Because I've heard from um, other sources that they're actually doing another experiment uh, should be coming out in the next couple of months. So I'm very excited to see what they come up with. Uh, I haven't heard anything about it. What have you heard? I, I just heard that they're doing something different. Um, I don't know what that means. It was on uh, the Drinking Darlings, who are a podcast and Instagrammer group. Um, they actually interviewed some of the people over at High West, and they talked about it a little bit. So um, they didn't say what exactly it was. They said it was experimentation. And at the point, I'm like, they've already blended rice. They did that whole boo rye, which we talked about in the um, the 12 Hours of Boom. Um, so they're, I'm, I'm just wondering what's next. Maybe a tequila rye, vodka rye, rum rye. Rum rye would be pretty cool. Uh, what would vodka rye bring to it? I don't know. More Nothing. like woo girls. Woo! <laughs> so, but, uh, we but rye. We aged a rye in a vodka barrel. It did absolutely nothing. nothing. It, it made it so we could produce more. <laughs> basically got it double the yield but uh yeah no um i'm ex I, to be honest it would be really cool if it was a rum rye because i could really deal with some really nice sweet notes molasses with some rice spice in there well now it's i got the only one i've had that i had the angel's envy that was finished in rye barrels it was yep. okay at first but by the end of the dram the rum influence had just become so sweet on it and was overtaken enough that it it moved down the scale for me. Yeah, when you said that, I think I have it behind me too. So maybe I should pop that up in a bit. Yeah, and Brian Brennicky is tuning in. And that's what he just commented. Rum finished rye, compete with Angel's Envy rye. And that'd be cool. I, I would love to see more and more of these companies do these experimentations to try it out. Like I do love their core range, but having a company to expand in that direction would be awesome. Just if it's good or bad, you know, at least we're going to benefit from it. Yeah, uh, High West, though, for those that don't know, they source their whiskeys. I, th I believe most of them are MGP, if not all. But they don't hide it either. Uh, I've got the Yippee Kaye. Uh, Bart and I just reviewed it, and on the back, it clearly tells you that they did not coin the term Yippee Kaye. It's from the cowboy days in the 30s and 40s. And it also says something along the lines, we also did not distill this whiskey. It is sourced. So uh, they don't they don't hide it. And that one, the Yippie Kaye, is, is aged in, that's the, I believe that's the double rye that's then aged in vermouth barrels and Syrah wine barrels. And I really liked it. And there's a lot of sweetness that comes through on it as well. Yeah, so high risk do have a rye that they did make. Um, I have it right here. It's called the Valley Tan Utah Whiskey. Um, mm. It's not bad. It's not great though. So just FYI, that's that's their own. Yeah, so it's a it's a bit of a blend. They they say they put a bit of their own in there, just kind of like how Whistle Pig added a little bit more. And then I think we got a super chat from Whiskey in the Six. Thanks, buddy. Hold on. I'll keep that closer, probably. I wouldn't have to reach down there yet. Thanks, Rob, over at Whiskey in the Six. What a nice hat. I know. I like this hat. Agreed. Nice hat and indeed. Favorites. And part of World Whiskey Day was I got our own, I got on our shirt uh, from our Pete shootout, Make Make America Pete It Again. This, these are available for a limited time. Here, by the end of the show, I will uh, have a little trivia quiz question. And I'll give away one shirt to uh, somebody that's watching. Awesome. Great. But, yeah, no, um, overall, big fan of High West. Um, have you had any other of their lineup or just those two, the EPKA and the Midwinters? No, we've done several. We've had – now, I'll tell you, a lot of people like the Campfire. Yep, that's the not my favorite. It's not, the, it's, it's not 
bad. I just kind of found it confusing. Uh, the campfire is a rye, a bourbon, and a scotch, if I remember right. Yeah, no, that's correct. It's got that smoky quality of the scotch or the peated scotch anyway. Yeah. And it's got their signature rye bourbon kind of. Yeah. Blend. Now the boo rye has been my favorite. Well, before a midwinter night's dram, boo rye was my favorite. And Yippee Kaye may be challenging it as well. Now, boo rye, though, brings a nice balance of bourbon and rye, which is what it is bourbon and rye together. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah, for me, um, I think it was like I did a comparison between the 2006, 2007 one of it, and I, I preferred the rye forward one a bit more than the bourbon forward. But um, overall, it's still a great blend, and that's what really got me into their lineup, I guess you could say. But um, I'm, I'm with you, right? I, I, I think the Midwinter's Night's Dram is probably my highest one, and then the Boo Rise. Nah. Now, for last year, uh, I put the, the Midwinter Night's Dram – challenging the Michter's toasted barrel rye toasted barrel finished which you don't have but those two to me were both vying for the one and two spot last year in the rye market yeah for me the the toasted was just i well i enjoyed the the cast strength more than the toasted and what i heard was a cast strength was basically used to make the toasted rye um, and sadly, I just, I prefer the, the, toes, uh, the car strength more than that. I just didn't think that the extra toasting added value to the whiskey. It, it seemed to, it, it smoothed it out. The, if you just, the regular barrel strength seems mm -hmm. to have a little bit more punch and a little bit more on the palate to it. I, I agree, but for the, the, the toasted barrel came off a little lighter, a little smoother, a little sweeter. Yeah, I guess that's where I'm in my journey, right? Like how we want that stronger punch in the face, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm enjoying this Midwinter's Night's Dram. So if no, any of you guys I'm, got this, let us know. I'm drinking neat and I haven't even added any. I didn't add any water to the toasted barrel or the uh, Michter's barrel strength or any water to the Midwinter Night's Dram yet. And it's, I mean, it's not real high. It's 40, well, it's 49.3%. Yep, so is mine. But yeah, it's it's very it's very um, interesting to see that the Michter's barrel strength stuff you don't even have to add water and it's just so smooth. Right. So what else you got back there? You got the Pikesville, you got the Woodford. I got the Woodford, and I'll tell you the Woodford Woodford Reserve Rye is the first and really only bottle that I've noticed that changed over time, and it's not even that empty. We so have have changed, turned bad Ooh, all right we we had re i had this for a while we reviewed it and it was probably not even that long six to eight months later i went back to it and i just i was like wow what is that that doesn't taste like anything i remember <laughs> now it's been a while since i've had it so i kind of thought well let's see and i've tried it a couple of times and it has some real off-putting notes to it maybe it's been my palate maybe not Huh, interesting. You know, it, and to be honest, like, I, as you mentioned before, and I know you guys are doing that gas test, right? Like, it definitely, whiskey does change the more air it comes inside. Like, I have a Takasuro 17 Japanese whiskey over here where a friend of mine bought a brand new bottle and I gave him a, a try of my half bottle and he, he enjoyed the the aged bottle or the aerated bottle more and actually complained and said, dude, you lied to me. I'm like, it's not my fault. You know, it, it changes. <laughs> it happens. So... That's very interesting to see. Maybe I'll try to find my bottle over here. Maybe you can do a side by side and see if it's sour or not. How uh, how full is it, or how long has it been opened, or since you've gone to it? Mine's been a while. It's about uh, one fourth down or so. Mm -hmm. So it'd be a little bit of a difference, but yeah, let's go and see. Because, like I say, that's the only one that I've noticed. I'll just pour a little bit now. Let's do real quick though. I have to do, we're going to do a draw, my, or the drawing for the two uh, Irish whiskey glasses. Two Saturdays ago on Red Breast Lustau, we did, uh, you could comment, you could leave your name, leave the comment. We could register you for a, for a giveaway. I have them right here, uh, still in the box. Two, two uh, Irish whiskey glasses. So I'm going to do that drawing. I've got the list for that. And I will have, let's see, let me find out how many people I had. 
that registered. We are up to, we had 92 people register for the two uh, Irish whiskey glasses giveaway. Did you want me to do the random or do you want to do the random? You want to do it? Yeah. One, three, go up to 92. Pull it. Siri, give me a random number between one and 92. Twelve it is. Twelve. Twelve is Martin Caravati. I'm so sure. Martin, if you're in there, congratulations. Martin and Martin's been around for a while, following, commenting, watching the reviews. Uh, we will send you a message or try to get with you. If you're watching, send us an email at scotchtestdummies at gmail.com. And uh, George Kaplan, we don't want you sending an email pretending to be Martin. Wow, that actually happens. Come on, George. <laughs> Come on, bud. Oh, all right. So uh, let's see. Woodford Reserve Ride. Now, ours is bottled. They all should be the same. 45.2% ABV. That it's been correct. a while since I've been here. No, still smells okay. Yeah, smells a bit George weird. is watching. I knew he would be. He says, oops, he got caught. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I got uh, batch 41 or label batch 41, bottle 2604. I don't know if that makes a difference, but. um, What was your barrel or label batch? 41. I'm at 50, so I was even after you. Oh, damn. Now, in our area, if I remember right, this is like thirty-two to thirty-five dollars. Yeah, it's around that price. It's 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 a, a lower end or lower priced. Sorry. Yeah, and at first I was like unbelievable. I tasted it. I called uh, cousin Shane. We've had him on a few shows. He likes rye, and I told him I said you gotta go pick up the Woodford Reserve rye. I get like bananas. That's weird. Do you remember bananas before? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to think like, did I eat a banana today or something? <laughs> but it's not off-putting. So that, I guess that's a good thing. Using my scotch and time glasses. Do you guys still have glasses? You guys have glasses on um, on sale still, right? Um, yeah. And actually I'm, well, I'm using uh, Mark Gillespie's whiskey cast glass right now, but Fancy. yeah, we've got glasses up. we got all kinds of stuff up. Our, our merchandising, our sales are doing good. Like, my peat shirt. Yeah, man, that's a nice shirt. That artist is very good. Yeah, we got a good graphics designer. Yeah. But um, I have to say, like, when you get becoming the whiskey community, I think a lot of you guys would know too, you start collecting Glencairn glasses like crazy. Mm -hmm. Like with different logos and stuff. Like all the glasses I have here, except for like one, has all of a logo on it and something. It's kind of funny. I don't, I'm, I'm not getting necessarily any of the off-putting stuff that I got before. When I'd gone to it before, I just knew it had changed. Now, I'm, I'm getting a lot of oak right now. Wet oak. A little bit of sweetness. Are you getting spice? Because I'm not. Sweetness. Yeah, I'm not getting like a rye spice, which, which no. you would assume a rye would be, right? So, right. And that's why it's kind of like... My head's kind of in a spin right now because uh, my mind is telling me it's awry. So I'm like hunting for that spice. I just just can't. Okay, let's see. I had uh, the drawing for the two all glasses I just did. We did some shout out. Did we get everybody mentioned that was that was involved today in the World Whiskey Day Whiskey Tuber? Yes, we we listed the whole group that um, Aqua Beauty kindly gave us gave it to us. So we saw, read every name there. Okay, good. Um, what else? Just to say thank you to all the people in the chat and following. I know that a lot of you guys have been jumping from each and each and um, just say thank you so much. I've been in the chat. I know Scott's been in the chat. So um, it's just great to see the community actually getting together and stuff like that, especially for something like this. I just love having you guys. You know, it's just like you guys are in our houses right now, just basically having a chat and uh, drinking. And having a good excuse to drink is always a good thing because you don't want to be called an alcoholic. So. Yeah. <laughs> Now we're just with I, friends. I, I only drink about? Sundays through well, Tuesdays through Sundays. Yeah, sadly me with every day that ends with a Y. So yeah, uh, Tom is commenting about our our rocks glasses. They're still in the works. We are working on them. We are getting these. Uh, they should be in hand hopefully sometime soon. 
And we went with a, uh, a sand etching, uh, different than a laser engraving. It's, mu it's much deeper, uh, has a much richer, more depth of feel to it. And uh, you can actually feel the, uh, the sand etching into the glass. It's very nice. Yeah, that's that's a perfect looking glass, especially for um, the giveaway you guys are doing for the ice cubes that's happening right now. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you guys have didn't notice on your last what Yippie Kaye, right? That's where um, they should uh, chime in. Yeah, yeah, uh, on the Yippie Kaye, and it's some uh, like a two inch by two inch squared uh, ice cube tray. And actually, I used one the other day. I was showing my nephew that was here, and and I really liked it. Yeah, yeah, I personally like the silicone stuff. I don't know if you guys use the harder plastic ice trays. Those are a pain in the butt, but if you get those silicone ones, they actually do really well. Yeah, yeah, it does. It works very nice. But yeah, for some reason, I'm getting banana bread, man, or something like that. I don't know. Maybe it's just glass. Well, but, no, I don't think so. No, ooh, I just got a really nice sour oak. Yeah, yep. Now okay. that this has gotten back into my palate. And that's what I say, this Woodford Reserve Rye, it's the first whiskey that I've really noticed it change. I don't know if I want to say badly. But just but not to your taste? Not change good. You know, a lot of bottles mm -hmm. you go back to as they get down and they've changed for the better. The Woodford Reserve Rye was better, fresh, and new. And literally within six to eight months had turned to this really kind of a sour oak notes um how far along are you guys with your um aeration test i know you had that what at the end of last year right we are yeah we and we will only touch on that and come back every december it'll be kind of a december. end of the year okay i'm very very excited to see that to see how that goes to be honest and, and those that are watching that don't know we came in we we have three bottles basically we bought mccallan 12s and we bought ardbeg 10s no, wait, Lafroig. They're Lafroig tins, aren't they? But we took two of them and we drained them down to where they're about half full or maybe a little over half. One of them we have gassed and one of them we haven't. So we've let it see what oxygen will do to it. And then we've got a third control bottle that we've left sealed and unopened. Now the sealed and the unopened bottle, we're not going to touch for five years or so. But each year in December, we're going to come back and just pour little samples from the gassed version and the non-gassed version and just see if there's any differences. So it's a long-term experiment. Five, seven, ten years. But hopefully you know, we'll see what happens. I definitely think that's a cool experiment, and I'm very excited to see that because like, I've had bottles where it's done that, but then I've never had a control like you guys had. Yeah. So I think that's pretty cool. Well, the thing is, we had so many questions. So many people ask you that. And it's saying, I, I'm sure you get it, Charles, too, with all those bottles behind you. Do you gas your whiskeys? We had Mark Gillespie on from Whiskey Cast. And, he, and like you, Charles, he's got a lot behind him. And he says, I've never gassed a bottle in my life. He says some of these bottles have been open for 10 years. Yeah, I think my oldest bottle here is about six years open. And I don't gas my whiskeys, but... Um as a kind of a, I want to say a control, but I, I think it was like three years ago, um, at least half of my collection, I put in mini bottles and stored them. Yeah. So then eventually if I want to do that or someone says, Hey, Charles, you sent me a whiskey it tasted weird. I'm like, Oh shit, I got to try it and see what happens. So but that's pretty cool. And then you're documenting it on YouTube as well. So at least a lot of people can see it. Cause I know a lot of people are trying to sell you either a gassing equipment, a balloon equipment where they put a balloon in there and they hold that there. I've seen those. So a lot of people are trying to, you know, take your money for something that may or may not change. So, yeah, but this Woodford Reserve Rye is literally the first one I had noticed it changed, not for the good over time. And then, um, yeah, Jason, uh, Mr. Bananas is here holding this glass because whole bejeebies. I'm getting banana bread, which is weird. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm just craving banana bread. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about bananas, but a sour wood dust it, it just it's not anything like it was when we first opened the bottle and tested it i can tell you that much all right so i'm reaching out for my next one um it is the blackback honey rye so this is a look uh a one in virginia they won a bunch of the awards i think they won um the bourbon best flavored whiskey i think it was 
So this is basically a rye that was um, aged in a used honey barrel. So um, this is one whiskey that I give to people that come over to see, you know, they say, oh, I hate whiskeys. I hate whiskeys. So I'm like, all right, try this. And then they get this big hit of like honey. And it's, it's always fun to watch their expression. I bet a lot of you guys would do that too. Like when you give them a, a peated whiskey or a high proof whiskey, it's like seeing their expression if they like it or not. So this is one where I'm like, what do you think it is? And then eventually like, okay, sweet. And then you just like, okay, what do you think it might be? And then eventually if they don't guess, you say honey and they're like, bam, that's the one note flavor. So those are always fun. Okay. So you're going to one that I don't have. Yep. I have a, some, a sample left of Michter's 10 year old rye, which I think I didn't label it. I should have. I think this was from Claire. It could be from the beaver. But I'm pretty sure it's Claire. Either way, one of those two sent it to me, the Michter's 10-year-old rye. Awesome. Um, I do know that one was done with um, a female master distiller. The other one's done with a male master distiller. So two different master distillers for two different years. So very interesting to see their flavor profiles change over the years. So real quick, Martin Caravati won the uh, Two All Irish Whiskey Glass giveaway. Now let's do four, uh, the, the Pete Android head shirt. Now this will come in. I know we had this come up before when you guys text or you comment with your answer. Sometimes it shows up on your home screen different than what pings to the server and shows up on ours. I have to go with what shows up on my screen and I'll take a screenshot. I know when we did the 12 hours of boom, there was some confusion because somebody thought that their answer was sent in before someone else's, but that's probably because on your home screen, it shows up, you commented first, but by the time that comment reached the server and then pinged to us, it was one or two off. So whoever answers this question correctly will win one of the Android Pete Hope shirts. That's what we call it, Pete Hope. If you watched Make America Pete It Again this morning, bracket one, Bart and I both advanced the same whiskey. What, what whiskey is it? The first to comment wins. Wow, look at that. I wonder how many people are going to look at that uh, thing right now. Oh, Tom R. Tom R. Tom R. Got it. That's a speedy right there. <laughs> I'll take that. Oh, there's a lot of it there. Everybody's watching. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Did you guys really watch it or did you fast te forward it? Come technically, on. it's a Dark Cove committee release. We'll take uh, we'll take Dark Cove. That's close enough. Congratulations, Tom R. Yep. So Tom R. Won, uh, uh, Tom, just email me or comment here if you want to give me your shirt size. Extra small. Come on. If I have your, I think I have your address. If not, I'll, e I'll email. I've got your email. I'll get with you and uh, get your shirt size. Awesome. Congrats, Tom R. Yeah, Mama always told him good things would happen. <laughs> uh, are, are you excited to see um, the new Star Wars movie? You know, uh, I, I I can remember seeing Star Wars 1977 in the theater. Oh, damn. Okay. Blue, yeah, blew me away. Lo I've loved Star Wars ever since. Um, The last one, I even enjoyed the last one. I liked the spin on it. Well, I won't say I, the spin took me with, with Luke Skywalker and yep. him being cast. I mean, him casting himself away and why would he do it? And out goes the Jedi. But I thought the way they kind of spun it and that he just felt he could not, he tried to train a new Jedi and couldn't, and it turned to the dark side, you know, and Ben and he felt like the Jedi were done. It was a different spin than I would have went with it. But if every movie or every story was written the way you wanted it to go, you know, I mean, it's, it's to me, it's like, okay, that was different than I thought, but okay, I'll buy into it. Yeah, Whiskey um, Sneerson, it's not a spoiler, man. If you haven't watched it now, man, you're not going to watch it. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. To be honest. <laughs> But I'm I'm excited for the um the watch call the the Han Solo movie. I'm really I'm a big Han Solo fan. So hopefully they'll talk to about the how they got the dice, how he got the Millennium Falcon. That'd be pretty cool. 
Yeah. Now I'll tell you the first couple of com short commercials that I saw, I, I didn't really care for the way the actor was portraying Han. I thought it was different than it should be. But after watching the official trailer uh, in the movie theater, uh, when we went and watched um, Infinity War, the Avengers, which is a great movie too, by the way. And I saw the official full length two and a half minute trailer. Han Solo had warmed the actor playing Han Solo has warmed up to me. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. And, and yes, you should guys should watch Infinity War. That was a great movie. I definitely love that one too. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we have uh, it's Bourbon Night. How are you guys doing? The oh, they here? Yeah, they just popped in and say hello. Oh, happy World Whiskey Day to you, Chad and Sarah. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. And then uh, I know Jason. So uh, when I went, so if you guys haven't know, um, I'm Drink Caveman on Instagram. I met up with Jason Whiskey Wise while I was in London um, and uh, dropped him a few samples he wanted to talk to me. About. So I gave him a few of my samples like I did to you, um, Scott and Bart, back in the day. So um, yeah, to sent him. Um, right now, I, I have a thing called the Woman's Kiss, which is a Syrah aged barrel with some Wild Turkey 101 which was really interesting seeing Jason Whiskey Wise's face for the first time, just being like, what is this? He was like, is it rye? Is it I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> but I uh, eventually had to tell him what it was, but uh, it was nice to see a, um, a, a whiskey es expert trying to identify a whiskey that he's never tried before. So that was a fun experiment. And he did the exact same thing with me with a um, Mizanara cast Irish whiskey. Um, I was trying to figure out what the flavor was and he looks at me and just goes, experiment. And I'm like, damn it found it for me. So, um, it's always fun when like, especially like when I watch you guys and you know, you guys say these like, Oh, it tastes like this. And I'm like, son of a bitch. I think you're right. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, a, it's always fun when, um, you watch uh, fellow whiskey tubers and stuff like that, or even just message people on DMS be like, Hey, do you get this flavor? So if you guys ever have the questions, feel free to reach out to us. We we actually love these uh, questions. So I'll tell you, I moved on to the sample of the 10 year Michter's rye, which is delicious. If this was barrel strength, which this is, a, I'm guessing, 46, maybe 48%, it's still very good, very sweet, very rich. The time, the age in the barrel is definitely showing. If this was barrel strength, though, or 55% even, wow. Yeah, and sadly, I would also think the price would be wow. Probably, yeah. <laughs> but yes, no, um, the 10 years is a great whiskey. Um, I do prefer... The newer version because it's a bit more spicy i don't know how spicy that one is for you but well v rich just made a super chat and at twenty dollars to hide all of bart's manga shirts <laughs> i Have think you need a lot more than that <laughs> <laughs> i wish i could yeah 20 bucks i actually tried to look for some manga shirts today so i couldn't find any what I ought to do is get with Bart's wife and then go over there and like start his little uh, fire pit in the backyard and film me throwing them all in that fire pit while it's going. That would be a good one and surprise him. That'd be fun. You do you can do uh, like a Aquavitae dumpster uh, bottling while they're burning shirts in the background. Yeah, that'd be a pretty cool sight. Well, and it's Bourbon Night is commenting. Um, I don't know if it's Chad or Sarah or both is tuning in. Thanks, everyone. They say, happy World Whiskey Day to y'all. Hope everyone is drinking something good tonight. We love the Scotch Test Dummies. Show them some love. Yeah, and you guys are great, too. Uh, and we, Charles and I, decided to do some rise. We've been going through a little bit of a rye uh, lineup. Yeah, I know you guys would have been all over that as well. Uh, since we did not do any scotches, so... I bet they're happy about that, but I think, um, I think they're, um, so they did a live earlier today and I think they did a scotch. What? They might correct, they might correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, it's bourbon. I, I, I know you guys did a live stream. I saw it a little bit of it. I was, I know they did world whiskeys, so they definitely did more than just bourbon. All right. Well, we're coming up. We've almost gone through an hour already. We're at, uh, 753 here. We got a few minutes left. Yeah, we got, uh, who do we got? We got Moultrie in Montreal with Eric Waite coming up next. Yeah, so when you're done here, uh, Swami, if you can, post your link, if it'll let you over in the comments so people know where to go, or just go to Moultrie in Montreal's channel next, uh, right at 8 o'clock Central Time. Uh, he's going live with Eric Waite. I haven't seen Eric, though. I think Eric might still be uh, sleeping it off his earlier 
cornbread video from this morning. Yeah, that guy definitely drinks, man, but he's full of laughs, so they're going to have a great time over there. It's going to be really fun. So um, can't wait to see you all when um, when this one ends up in a couple of minutes. And uh, if Bourbon Knight points out they are, you are correct, they did a scotch, a Canadian, and an Irish whiskey. There you go. Definitely a world whiskey right there. I was going to say there, that's more worldly than we decided to do. I, I definitely feel as though that rye is kind of, I won't say it, get a bad rap, but definitely not represented. You know, a lot of people think American whiskeys is more bourbon. So um, thank you so much for, you know, telling us, hey, let's just try some rye. So I'd love to highlight some of our favorite rye. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And things that we talked about, uh, we, of course, we aired uh, Make America Pete It Again, bracket one. Came out earlier today. That's the, we've done, basically we've got 33 peated bottles that we've gone through. The best of those are included in Make America Pete It Again. Chad and Sarah would not appreciate this lineup. Uh, this is heavy, heavy peat. They thought there was a lot of peat in the Highland Park Magnus, which has like two PPMs. So, but the best of 33 bottles we've gone through, uh, we advanced uh the today so the next four episodes that air this wednesday next saturday uh the next wednesday and the following saturday would be the championship for make america beat it again we've got uh, special t-shirts bumper stickers are on our website check that out uh the on the t-shirt side site if you go to spread shirt we've got some posters as well and we also have put up the 12 hours of boom poster. So go to the t-shirt shop and you can get the 12 hours of boom poster from last year. We had a lot of requests for that that came in and we'll probably just let that be available up until this year's 12 hours of boom, which is on July 7th. And then you also have the Drams for fam t-shirt up on your website, correct? Yep. And Drams Where's for that? fans as well. Like I say, that'll be next Sunday. Uh, all proceeds from that and Super Chats will be do donated to uh, our local food bank. Uh, tune in next Sunday, 2 p.m. Central Time. We'll take uh, any of the Super Chats that come in or you can donate directly to your local food bank. If you're in Chicago, you can donate to go to just foodbank.com. Uh, I believe it is. You can click on Chicago for your city and you can donate right to it. We just want a picture of that, or you could tweet out uh, Instagram, hashtag it, Drams for Fams, and we'll show uh, what influence we have and how much money we can bring in to help out the Edmonton Scotch Club. Yeah, no, that's a great cause. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, you guys can find me on uh, Drinking Caveman or uh, every Tuesday, um, regularly, hopefully, at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I think it's 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Whiskey Untitled with me and Scotch and Sniff. And you can also follow him on Instagram, Scotch and Sniff. So um, that's where we are. Um, it's basically just chat like what we're doing now. Um, nothing really crazy. We do talk about some topics and then eventually chat like Go Habs and uh, Eric Waite and stuff kind of mess us up. So we start talking with the chat most of the time. So, now, yeah. how quick, uh, or real quick, how did you, how did you and, and Wally connect how did, how did you guys decide hey let's do this so um, wally and i are, are decently big on instagram um i found out that he um fell out with his brother on um their youtube stuff so i was like hey i've always wanted to do a youtube with somebody just um you know talking about whiskeys and stuff like that and uh since we were so far away it was like the best way to do it is do it online and then we said why not people chat with us and stuff so that's kind of how it all happened it's just two guys on different sides of the u.s uh, meeting up online um as a lot of you guys know, um, not everybody's into whiskeys. They're more into their cocktails and so on. So having somebody with the same mindset and just talking and then with the chat that you guys have, just just amazing. So thank you guys for all the support as well. And thank you, um, Scotch and Dummies, for all the stuff that you guys do for us. Um, I know you guys have been chatting us a lot. So, And everyone else on the chat, thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks to everybody that tuned in. Uh, Charles, big fan of what you and, and what you're doing, what you and Wally are doing. I like your banter. I like your the live streams that you guys do on Tuesday nights. Uh, for those that are watching, uh, try to tune in. Go to Whiskey Untitled on YouTube. Just subscribe to them. Give them some love. Uh, thanks to everybody that tuned in. We're coming up on the end of our time. Go to Malted in Montreal next. He will be live with Eric Waite. Hopefully, Eric Waite is up and around. All right. Take care, guys, and thank you again for joining us. Uh, and we'll see you guys in uh, Multi Malted in Montreal's channel.
Happy World Whiskey Day, everybody. Cheers. <laughs>